So hopefully you caught the battery build video for this battery here. There's a whole lot of information just in that video, but then also I wanted to point out just the BMS side of it because there was a lot of work just on that. So basically wiring it up and programming it, getting it connected. I, I want to point out just how to do that in this video. So where we're going to start is just what wires are what and where they need to go. And then we are going to get into how to actually get the app first of all. And then once you get it, what you need to do and what settings you should put in and ease or pretend to. It does seem to be working good where I have it right now. So I'm confident that you can get there. Um, this is a, a great BMS to use. It, it was like a hundred and this is barely over a hundred bucks for this one. And this is the 420 amp continuous 1050 amp peak version. So about the beefiest BMS you can get for dirt cheap. Um, it's not active balancing, it's passive balancing, which means it only balances when you're charging at the end of your charging cycle between, you can set up when it balances, like mine set up to balance between 4.1 volts per cell to 4.2 volts per cell. It's gonna be balancing in that zone too. So it, it takes longer to charge when you are balancing. It lowers the amperage that it's drawing in that time. So I'll be charging at, I think I set it to 20 amps usually, and then it drops to 10 amps after it gets to 4.1 volts. So for starters, your general wiring consists of three connections on each side. So I did my negative wires, three separate wires that come up and attach to the three different terminals. And then my positive off of the battery runs straight to the controller, no BMS. And then the wire that comes back from the controller hooks to these three posts on this side. And then up here you have all of your balancing wires and your temp sensors. So the temp sensors were easy. I just plugged those in back here and ran them down each side of the battery. I have two on each side, one on the back and one towards the front on both sides. So you need to run one balancing wire to each positive of each parallel pack. And then there's also a positive and negative connection wire that you need just to send power to the BMS. So for starters, you hook the negative connection to the negative post. Your number one balancing wire is the first positive after the negative terminal. So the positive side of the same cells attached to the negative terminal, that will be where you attach your first balancing wire. And then you'll switch back and forth to the positive of the next cells in series all the way around until you get to your last parallel pack. And then the chances of you having the same amount of series connections as your BMS is rated to take is low. And you can plan for that maybe. If you want to plan on what size of BMS you can get, then go ahead. But I got a 30S BMS and I did a 28S battery. So basically I ran all of my BMS wires the same as I would normally, but then I had two left over that I just don't hook to anything. And it's the last two right before you get to the positive wire. Those are the two that I'm not hooking up. And I just kind of coil, I cut them shorter and coil them up right here. So I have plenty to attach to if I need to later for whatever reason. I don't think I would. But then the positive post is a little bit different than the negative because remember you're attaching the balance wires to the positive end of each cell. So the positive post is also the last parallel pack positive. So you attach the positive connection and the last balancing wire to the same positive post. So with all those in place, now the actual connecting of the BMS should be set solid, and then it's time to get the app. So for the app, what you gotta do, I'm not sure on Apple, it might be in the App Store, but for Android at least, it wasn't in the Google Play Store, so I had to just look it up on Google and download it from my web browser and it worked fine. It was a little bit sketchy feeling, but it, it didn't give me any viruses or anything and it worked just fine. So I downloaded the app from there and then you first pull up the app and you get this screen that has these Chinese symbols on it that who knows what they mean, but there's you can see the little Bluetooth symbol. So that's the one you gotta click so that you can hook it up to Bluetooth. Once you're in there, you'll see this screen where you can see it's not hooked to a battery and you need to wake up your BMS to actually do anything. So I'll show how to do that right now. So the BMS also came with this connector right here that has these two wires hooked to it. 
So what you need to do is just plug that connector into the last port like that. And then, let's see, I have a little button somewhere. And then you should also get this little tiny button in the package with the BMS. And it has these two little tiny posts for you to solder those wires to so that you can activate it by pushing the button. But all that does is give you a momentary connection between these two wires. So um, for now, all I did was just touch the two wires together. It's that, it's that simple. So um, touch them together for a second. And it, remember, it's just a momentary connection, so you don't need to hold them or anything. Just brush them together for half a second. And then there's a little blue LED that lights up on this side of the BMS. And it should make a little and that means that the BMS is activated. Um, I'm not sure yet if you have to do that every time or once it's hooked in the bike, if you turn on key power or give it throttle, it does the same thing. I'm guessing that's what it is, but I'm not positive yet. Okay, so for a quick run through of the app, right now it's hooked to my battery. As far as connecting it to your battery, in my case, it was a pain every time i've done it three times now and it's been a kind of a pain every time so if you pull up your settings i was seeing two separate ones i connect i could connect to for some reason and uh, i'm not sure why but if i connected to either one of them it would not pull up in this app but there was a couple times that i connected to it and then unconnected to it and then it all of a sudden showed up in the app as connected i don't understand why um other options are there's a device list that sometimes works. Sometimes the devices come up here and you can select one and it doesn't usually connect to them that way. And then there's also a scan code to connect where it uses just the uh, QR code that's on the BMS. Um, nothing just works. That's kind of the silly part about it is um, everything that I did was kind of like tried a bunch of stuff, nothing worked, and then all of a sudden it was just connected and something, I did something different last each time, so not sure even if that had anything to do with it. I think it just finally actually sees it. Kind of weird, but beyond that, this is what you'll see when you open the app. Obviously, mine's a little different because I've already programmed stuff. Right here, it shows a your percentage. That only works if you program in your information for your battery. When I pulled it up, it was pre-programmed to have 3.4 volts be your 0% number. I don't understand why that's the case. That's like the go-to storage level for battery cells. So all of my battery cells were at 3.45 volts. And so I said I was like 0% pretty much. I was like 8%. So I fixed that now. So it, it's 42%, which is where it should be for storage. If I scroll down here, you can see all of my different parallel packs. Now, if you pull yours up and you're a little bit confused because there's a couple that are not in line, it's because those are the ones that aren't connected, unless you're using used cells or something that could be way out of line, there's also that possibility. But in my case, I pulled it up. This is Remember, this is a 30S BMS and I have a 28S battery. So I had two cell connections at the bottom that said nine point something volts for some reason. I'm not sure why that's what it was reading for the ones that weren't connected, so it kind of confused me, but they just weren't connected at all. And then I also had a warning up here that said series connection open or something. So I just had to set my pack size and it fixed that. And so you can see they're all in line right now. I have not put a charge on this battery yet. I'm still keeping it right at storage voltage there's no reason to change that until i get it in the bike and i'm ready to run i'll probably test it like this and then run it down to a bit lower before i even put any charge in it at all so to quickly go over the parameters that you come to this page and there's just a bunch of different parameter settings so starting with the top one voltage parameters there's all these unit over voltage protect unit over voltage recover so that just means 4.25 is what I have it set to is when it will absolutely stop that battery from going higher. It, it stops any power from going into the cell and then it
happens to your total. So the total for the whole pack. And then there's the same thing with the low. And so all these are the protect, but then there's also warning. So your, your warnings are, it's, it won't stop it from happening, but it lets you know that it's happening. So you have both of these for about every single setting. So you can program your warning in a spot where you don't want it to go beyond that, but you don't want it to shut you down if it does. And then the protect is that thing is turning off or whatever it needs to do to prevent that problem. So pretty cool that way. You got lots of versatility, but at the same time, that makes this a little bit confusing. And then you, you can see like there's unit voltage differential warning. Um, that is just how much different the cells get before it has a problem. So it gives you a warning at half a volt on mine. And if I find the, there you go, the, the unit voltage differential protect, if it gets a volt of difference in battery cells or parallel packs, that is a ton. And so like, obviously there's something bad going on and it's going to shut it off. So I set all these parameters. If you think you're an expert and any of these are silly, then you feel free to put that in the comments and let me know. There's, there's some that I do have questions on. Um, same thing with temperatures. All this is just regulating temperatures. What I did is I just pulled up the actual temperature information on the cell. I pulled up the spec sheet for that cell and I entered all that in with the caveat that my temp sensors are on the bus bars and there's always going to be a little bit of difference in temperature. Like if you're building heat from your cell, then just the difference in the temperature inside of the cell to outside of the cell is going to be different. So keep that in mind and set it below what your maximum for your cell says. So, so mine said 85 degrees Celsius and I put the absolute max at 75. Um, I just don't want to be pushing it. I want to, I want to stay in the clear. So, um, so the next one is current. So this is just your amps on everything. Um, same kind of deal with everything. You're charging and discharging and you got your warnings and your protects. Um, pretty simple that way. Um, your balance parameters is, um, when it starts balancing, I kind of mentioned this earlier in the video, you can tell it when to start balancing. And then that one at the bottom tells you the amps that it drops to for the balance charging. So from what I understand, you don't want it to be balancing the whole time because you want to just inject a bunch of amps first and then balance it out after that. And it, when it's a little bit easier on the balancing wires and stuff. So, um, this is one of my questions, probably the biggest one that I have the balance current. You can see there's the balance charging current that's 10 amps and the balance current is 180 N. I couldn't even find what the N value is. That should be about 100 milliamps, I think. Uh, not sure what that transfers into. If that's, is N like a measurement of current? I've never heard of that before. Maybe I'm just out of the loop, I don't know. But if you do know about that, let me know in the comments, please. Um, and then your pack parameters, this is kind of the one you should probably go to very first. So you can see right at the top, series number. I put 28S. That fixes your cell readings at the bottom. So you want to do that right off the get-go. Um, same thing with the other things you're going to be reading. Um, you have to set your, your amp hours of your pack. And then you can see that it was, it, mine showed 70 amp hours is my total. And then it showed like 29 right now. I believe they're just getting that number based off of your voltage. So there, it's like at this voltage, you have so much percentage remaining. And at that percentage, you still have this much amp hours remaining. I, that's the only way I can think of that they're calculating that. And that might not be entirely accurate because I've seen a bunch of stuff about, it's not just a one-to-one -one ratio of voltage drop to capacity drop. Uh, but nonetheless, it should give you a good rough estimate. And then that is something that you can come in. So you can see that you got your percentage unit volts. And so that right there, you're programming what voltage you want it to read, what percentage. That's the only way you get your percentage. So I tried to look up a baseline for what voltage is what, and I couldn't find anything great. So I kind of put in rough estimates. The top, you can see like the 60 to 100% or like weird random numbers. That's what they already had. 
but then they only went down to 3.4, so I threw in some random ones after that. That is something that I believe, if you can go on a pretty steady, normal ride and track the miles that you get from each voltage, that would be the most accurate way to do it because there's gonna be so many different variables. Tracking it yourself is the only actual way to know. But is that important? Like in my head, look at your voltage. It's like, you know that once you get to 2.8 volts, some, some guys go down to 2.5. My battery cells tell me I can go down to 2.5, but there's so many people that say that it's a bad idea and I don't wanna push my luck. I just don't feel like pushing my luck today. So 2.8 volts is where I'm at. If I was in a really, really bad situation, I could probably come in here and say, give me an extra 0.1 volts so that I can make it out of this hole or something like that, you know? But just keep an eye on your voltage and you will know about how far you can go. But just remember in general, a lot of people say, if you take just halfway between 2.8 or 2.5 and 4.2, if you just take the median of that, that isn't actually your 50% point. I think the general consensus from people's testing that I've seen is that you have more capacity on the top end of that voltage than you do on the bottom. But like I said, you need to test yourself and I'm going to be testing a bunch on mine. So you're welcome to see my research when it's posted and compare that to yours when you get to there and maybe use mine as a starting point or any others that you see and then compile your own later. Or if you don't feel like compiling your own, you'll probably get pretty close with one using the rest of our research. So there's some other parameters like system parameters and stuff that I haven't even touched. I don't really see the reason to mess with it right now. I still need to do more research about this stuff, but to get you going, this should cover everything you need here. Okay, I'm still researching stuff and still figuring out exactly what to do and what all those parameters were and stuff, but uh, I'll make another video when I get all those details figured out, but what I really wanted out of this one was just the general idea of how to do it because I couldn't find anything on like how to get the app, how to set it up, how, or what even means what, why am I seeing nine volts on random parallel packs and stuff like that. So I wanted a general idea to give you a starting point. And then from there, we can move on to the more detailed stuff together. So watch out for that video. Watch out for the rest of this build. And if you haven't caught the other videos about this battery and this bike, please do so. It's pretty sweet. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.